Good morning, everybody. Today's lecture is about literary interpretation. I am Dr. T. Santamari, Associate Professor from Vistas. First, I'll take you through the content of this video. First video will be on introduction. I'll be talking about definitions. We have got different definitions of literary interpretation. Then I'll talk about the purpose of literary interpretation. Then I'll move on to the types of literary interpretation followed by elements of literary interpretation. And then I'll be talking about the approaches of literary interpretation and then the basic types, which means to say repeated basic types or the um, key basic types that are used in literary field. So what is literary interpretation? Is it so different from interpretation as it is? Yes, interpreting means understanding. Literary interpretation is understanding a literary text. So that's the basic difference between interpretation and literary interpretation. And why is it so important? It is very important because it helps us to understand what is the text means or what does the author tries to tell us. And how is it significant in liter literary studies or literature studies? It is so important because it helps us to analyze, understand the context of the writing. For example, if you read Wordsworth's poetry, then you would be able to understand the context of romantic age with the piece of literature, with the piece of writing. And what are the elements of literary interpretation? For example, if you talk about the elements of literary interpretation, you should actually talk about the genres of literary interpretation or genres of literature. We have got three or two, four major genres, prose, poetry, drama, and novel, I mean fiction. So when you have prose, poetry, drama, and fiction, each one will have a different literary elements. And what are the approaches or how do we approach the literary um, text? What are the types we have? So these are the important uh, points which will be discussed in this video. So if you look at this picture, then you'll probably able to understand literary interpretation better. First of all, we should establish a purpose. Why I am reading this particular text, which means to say objective of reading the text. Usually, there are two different purposes of reading a text. First one is for pleasure, second one is for purpose. So usually, literature students read a text for both purposes. In classroom, we read for purpose, for exam, to understand. In general, we read for time pass or for enhancing our knowledge. So second is, what are the perspectives that we apply for reading? Perspective talks about subjectivity and objectivity. And what are the critical lenses that I use? I mean, do I just read and appreciate or just do I read and analyze or just do I read and interpret something in my own terms? So usually interpretation is all about terms, perspectives, my own terms of understanding and your own terms of understanding. My own under terms of understanding is different, will be different from your own understanding because we understand a specific concept depending on our own level of experience, which is called a frame of reference. So that is why understanding is very important, interpretation is equally important. So you read, then you reread a text, so which actually helps us to analyze. So when you read and analyze, we either respond to it or we appreciate to it. Then what do we do? We discuss responses to a text. So how do we um, discuss responses to a text? We either ask questions or we uh, create uh, models for that. And then we build a meaning. Actually speaking, interpretation takes place for one important purpose, which is meaning making. It's a newer term. Usually we never had, a such, we never had such a terms like meaning making or making of meaning. But these days we have got a different term, meaning making. Meaning making itself is a very broad area of study. Um, but we will talk about interpretation, understanding, my own meaning of the word or the text. So definition, it's an art act of explaining, reframing, retelling, which means to say perspective, individual perspective. And literary interpretation is a purposeful approach and analysis, analysis to an understanding. It facilitates meaningful, relevant, inclusive utterances. It helps us to broaden our perspectives and inspire meaningful engagement with the world around us. For example, if I read a text of Arundhati Roy's God of Small Things, for example, 
when i read the novel i will be able to understand or i will be able to interpret sociologically psychologically politically these are the three major areas of understanding when i read the novel aditi roy's novel god of small things because it talks about the social structure of india it talks about the political structure of india it also talks about the social class of india so these are the three different major literary interpretation that i get by reading the aditi roy's word of sorry god of small things so this is what is all about literary interpretation and when we when we interpret literature we are trying to find the meaning and significance of the story we just don't find meaning for words rather we find meaning for the entire context and by getting the entire contextual meaning we try to apply or we try to derive significance of the story and what do we do we ask ourselves the text what does the text mean and why is it important usually when you read a text the text is written for the purpose of the public say for example i write i don't want to keep it with me but rather i want my people to read and enjoy read and experience read and respond so there is a purpose behind writing so when we interpret the purpose is fulfilled so the purpose again given to in discover the intention of the author why i write sometimes the good reading will end up in good writing say for example if i come across um an unethical or unfair or injustice in the city then i end up in writing when i write in newspaper it goes to a, a major people i mean it reaches a very major audience when i write and keep it with me it just sticks only with me or it just be with me there's no purpose of me writing except i just bring out all the emotions out but in the larger scale what i do i'll just bring out the a uh, text to the audience to the public i want them to read and understand an experience i want them to read and understand and realize or i want them to educate okay so that's the purpose of um, writing so the writing is fulfilled only when the interpretation is clear and then to understand the works historical socio economic and cultural background as i told you earlier these are the specific um, purposes of literary interpretation and what do we do to set the context say for example if i read shakespeare's othello i won't be able to understand or if i teach othello to this class students won't be able to understand or relate to what happens in othello's um, story i mean the story of othello because i need to set the context of the historical context of othello for the so so as to give the understanding of the story and later the major part is to analyze and evaluate and work of art it is important to analyze and evaluate when we evaluate we talk about judging all right so these are the purposes of studying literary interpretation and talking about the types we have got many types of literary interpretation first one is formalist feminist reader response archetypal marxist psychoanalytical mythological sociological structuralist for example formalist approach is to talk about a literary text as a whole piece for example if you have a prose then you will talk about the prose the entire prose we don't talk about segment in segment same goes with feminist when we talk about feminist approach to literary interpretation then i talk about um, literary interpretation a feminist perspective i as a female how do i approach a piece of study and then third one is reader response theory what do you mean by reader response it's actually a called reader response theory it can be any reader a b c d or gender irrespective whoever reads a story will respond to it depending on the frame of reference as i told you earlier so that is the one approach then talks about archetypal archetypal talks about the repeated themes that we usually come across in uh, novels or poetry or in any piece of writing then marxism talks about a marxist approach talks about reading a text or interpreting a text based on the class social class the struggle of social class the one best example i told you is arundhati roy's god of small things that's the best example that you can apply for marxist approach of literary interpretation and then is the psychoanalytical literary interpretation in this literary interpretation we approach characters most importantly characters because as long as characters are alive or characters are alive we have to talk about psychology so that's how we talk about then mythological 
So mythological approach is talking about a literary piece in um, mythological um, perspective. Talks about Ramayana. These days, a lot of epics are rewritten and republished. So that's actually a mythological um, approach. Then we have sociological approach. Talking about soci sociological approach, we talk about social perspectives or the social conditions. You read a text, you apply the social condition, then you make a meaning. Again, the best example is God of Small Things because it talks about social condition of India. And then structuralist. This is again an important uh, um, point of discussion because structuralist analyze the literary text by grammatical structure, not as the meaning, not as the whole text, but how the sentences are constructed. For example, if you construct a sentence in active voice, then meaning is understood by in active voice. If you understand the mean, sorry, if you construct a sentence in passive voice, then the meaning is understood in passive voice or passive mode. So that is the types of uh, approaches to literary interpretation. Then we have the basic types. These are all repeated texts, very important. Author focused, text focused, reader focused, context focused. What do I mean by author focused? When I talk about author focused, it's what I write from my perspective. I am disturbed by what's happening in the society, so I write. So author focused. In this approach, readers do not have much role. So you have to interpret only from my perspective. In other words, it becomes subjective writing. Text focused. It's neither author focused nor reader focused. Exactly what is given in the text is given. And then is the reader focused? what you understand. You forget about the author, you forget about the text. What you understand is the reader focused and then is the context focused. Context is the one main uh, backbone of the entire, uh, it's actually called a situation. Situation, okay. So context focus is very important again because it gives you a, a broader um, understanding of the literary piece. So these are the uh, important uh, approaches and then this is the overview of literary interpretation. Say, for example, if you look at the uh, picture, you have got oxymoron, symbolism, idiom, tone, hyperbole, flashback, setting. So these are the terminologies which are used in all the genres of literature. Say, for example, symbolism is can be used in po both poetry, prose, and novel. Idioms are used in poetry. Flashback is used in novel. Setting again is used in novel and drama. Alliteration is used in poetry. Author methods again used in almost all the genres. Protagonist and antagonist is used, both of them are used in drama as well as novel. Then you have context, you have characters. Without characters, there is no piece of work. Character can be human, non-human. Then theme, personification. So all those things are called elements, literary elements. So this is for this is the purpose why we read literary elements. So the literary interpretation is reading a text, interpreting, which means to say understanding a text on many aspects. We will continue in the next videos. Thank you.